This is the 2012 F equals MA exam, and this is problem number 24. So we're given that there are three point masses that each have a mass of M, and they're connected by identical springs that each have a rest length of L. So they form a triangle, and initially they're at rest on a horizontal surface, but then they begin to rotate at some angular velocity of omega. And what we find is that the springs will then all stretch to a length of 2L. And we're asked to find the spring constant of the springs. So first thing to note is that since our mass, let's consider the top one here for now, it's traveling in a circle. So it will experience circular motion since it has some omega. In order to do so, then, there has to be some net radial force inward that will provide the necessary required centripetal acceleration, namely mv squared over r. Or, since we know that v squared is just r squared times omega squared, we can replace that to write that f net is equal to mr omega squared. Now, this required centripetal force will be provided by the two springs our mass is connected to. Now, these springs have the same force since they are displaced by the same amount and have the spr same spring constant. And we want to just break it into components, a tangent component and one that points radially inward. Now, what we find is that these angles are the same both 60 degrees, which we can see since the central angle is also 60 degrees, we find that these two horizontal components will actually cancel each other out. So we only have to look at the vertical pointing radially inward components. So that will be F times sine of 60 degrees for both. So these two forces, these two component forces will provide m r omega squared. So we can see that we have m r omega squared of the required force is provided by the two component string spring forces, namely 2 times f times sine of 60 degrees. Now, what we find is that f is just equal to k times some displacement. Now, what is our displacement? Well, initially, when it's at rest, it is at length l. And then, when it starts rotating, it is at 2l. So we find that our x, our displacement, is just going to be 2L minus L, or L. So F is equal to K times L. Another thing that we have to have is R. So R is going to be the distance from the center of the circle to our mass. Now if we draw that on our equilateral triangle, we find that R will just be 2 thirds, 2 thirds of the height because what we find is that the center of the circle is also known as the intersection of the medians of our triangle. And geometrically, there is a ratio of 2 to 1 from this length, which is r, to this length. So r is equal to 2 thirds of the total height. Now to find the total height, we know that the base is 2l. So half of the base, namely this, will be l. And since we know that this is 60 degrees, this entire angle will be 60 degrees, then we know that our height will just be, our height here will just be root 3 times L. So we put that in, we have R is equal to 2 over 3 times root 3 of L, or in other words, R is equal to 2 over root 3 times L. Now if we plug what we know into our equation, namely F and R, we find that M times r, which is 2 over the square root of 3 times l times omega squared is equal to 2 times f, which is kl, times 60 degrees, which is root 3 over 2. And now we want to solve for k. So first off, we can cancel off our l's. So we have that 2 times root 3 over 2 times k, which is just root 3 times k is equal to 2 over root 3 m omega squared. Now, if we divide by root 3 on both sides in order to solve for k, what we find is that ultimately k is equal to 2 over 3 m omega squared. And this is our spring constant for our system.